What's up guys? We got a lot to unpack today. We're going to talk about Bitcoin mining. We're going to talk about the Ethereum proof of work fork. We're going to talk about Intel laying off a lot of employees. We're going to, have to talk about crypto.com. We're going to talk about the inflation data, just lots of stuff. So first and foremost, so if you saw basically the, the network difficulty on the Bitcoin network has reached an all time high. Um, this is going to spell doom to a lot of miners because energy costs are going up and the difficulty is going up. So it's like uh, this is going to be a one two punch for a lot of mining outfits that are marginally profitable. Also, if they diversified in mining Bitcoin and Ethereum, for instance, if they're running GPU rigs or, you know, something else um, for their Ethereum mining. Now that it's changed to proof of stake they maybe try to jump over to these other chains. If you saw Ethereum Classic has been crashing and the Ethereum Proof of Work fork has been crashing as well price-wise. And that's that's to be expected because the people who are getting it, you know, obviously gonna sell it for more Ethereum to try to stack more Ethereum or stack more Bitcoin. And then um, the people that are mining it need to sell it to pay for their energy costs or to try to pay off their equipment, which they might still not have paid off. You got a lot of downward pressure and just the entire market from a crypto perspective is getting sucked down. Now, today the inflation data came out and um, you know, basically according to their calculations or whatever, this is the highest the inflation has been in 40 years. Now we know that the inflation data is pretty much a lie and it's understated, it's way higher than that. Um, it's probably more in the realm of 25 or 30%, uh, but you know, whatever they say, seven eight percent this or that um it's the highest it's been in 40 years according to their calculations now um that's gonna you know spell doom obviously for a lot of people they're clinching up on going out going out to eat doing different things and uh computer related stuff it's really kind of hit the tech sector extra hard intel's talking about laying off twenty thousand employees that's one company and this is what happened last recession on a daily basis, you'd see different articles coming out that, you know, IBM's laying off 10,000 people, John Deere's laying off 10,000 people, you know, Caterpillar's laying off 30,000 people. You know, these these kind of like articles just kept like rolling out, rolling out, rolling out. Again, we're in the 2007 iteration. 2007, 2022 is like the 2007, and then next year for 2023, that's going to be like the 2008. And I've, I've been harping on that. Uh, there's really kind of no way around it because if the Fed's, you know, main silver bullet, they're trying to knock out this inflation, they're going to keep raising interest rates. Um, it's just going to get worse for, you know, your average citizen, anybody trying to do anything. The fix and flippers in a lot of these different, in a lot of these different cities, they're going to be, you know, just completely obliterated essentially. Um, they're going to be already upside down on their inventory and a lot of stuff's just not moving. And again, when it maybe would have moved in two weeks to four weeks, now it's potentially going to take five, six, eight months to move a property. And a lot of these different cities are going to have to price cut, price cut, price cut. How desperate are they to get rid of those properties? It's just going to get worse. It just, it just ends up being a domino effect and everything's good until it's not. And it's not good. It's not a good situation. And then I guess there was 1.1 million jobs that were available that have been now removed. Those aren't available anymore. So off these different job boards or, you know, indeed.com, you know, uh, different, you know, jobs that maybe different companies were looking around on LinkedIn for different uh, people to fill these positions and stuff. 1.1 million of those, psh, poof, not available. Um, and then, you know, you guys have, that have been following me for a while, you've, Kind of seen my own experience of just trying to review some of these gig economy apps trying to do some of this different stuff and did not be able to turn up anything and can you imagine somebody with two bachelors of science degrees several areas where i consider well a couple areas i consider myself an expert i don't i don't sit there and throw out the word expert like that i'm an expert at every single thing or something but um that being said it, it's pretty shocking that I was not able to turn something up fairly quickly. Um, you know, and other people, I've seen some people like post some stuff, do comments and stuff like that, that, you know, they've 
became, you know, very, it's very upsetting. It's very depressing to not be able to find work or to just feel like you have to uh, be kind of underemployed, so to speak, if, if they're working retail or they're working um, something that's more of a kind of a manual labor kind of situation when they actually have, you know, a degree that they went to for, you know, four years or, or whatever. They actually have some kind of tangible skill and to not be able to find work. It's, it's very depressing for people um, and it's actually very, very bad on their mental state, which, uh, you know, people are already kind of, you know, potentially not feeling so great after all the lockdowns and all the BS. And they're still continuing this stuff out in California, guys. Don't, I'm in, you know, Clown World headquarters over here and um, they're still keeping up with this. I got a call actually for an after school program and, and they had, they had previously already told me that, oh yeah, you, you have to be, you have to be COVID vaccinated. And I never got the thing. And if you guys saw the recent thing that came out, um, nobody who's in shape in their 20s and 30s sits there and says, oh, I'm so glad that I got the COVID vaccine. Nobody cares. It didn't work and it caused more problems than it actually solved. And we see the Florida Attorney General came out and is basically recommending men ages 18 to 39 should not get the COVID vaccine because the heart attack rates went up 84% for the people who got vaccinated, 84%. Um, so not only did it not work and it was a scam, uh, you could die. <laughs> you know, can you imagine losing your job over the whole, you know, COVID vaccine, you know, BS. And not only that, you could die. Not from the virus, from the stupid vaccine that they've pushed out. So that being said, guys, um, there's a lot of things at hand that don't make sense. And the more of these things don't make sense, and the more, you know, the data is manipulated and stuff like that, um, the worse off, you know, obviously we're going to be. The jobs data, I think that that's manipulated, to be honest with you. They're acting like there's this low, you know, there's low amount of people that are looking for work and stuff like that. I just, you know, the unemployment data, I, I just think it's, it's completely bogus completely bogus so a lot of people hurting out there and um when you have gas prices in california that are higher than they are in hawaii let's think about that for a minute how would gas prices be higher in california than they are in hawaii <laughs> you know there's active you know oil wells and refineries in california um so again that's what happens when you let these clowns like run the place it's just not a good situation. A lot more people are going to have to leave ultimately. And then you just have kind of this destruction of wealth, you know, people who have maybe moved here, bought properties and um, trying to make a life. It's just, you know, so that being said on that, um, as far as a crypto perspective, we might have some little pumps and stuff like that. But the more you see like, yes, you know, today, yesterday, like last night and, and early today, obviously crypto was tanking. And then it kind of bounced off the bottom of where it was going to hit. Um, and there was just this like quick little V shape, you know, kind of recovery scenario. Uh, we're going to kind of see some of that in the stock market. We're going to see some of that in crypto, but it's not going to hold up. I can tell you that right now. It's not going to ultimately hold up. There's a lot of people that are trying to jump in like too soon. Like, oh, this is a good buying opportunity. They jump in too soon. And I mean, if you're dollar cost averaging in, I mean, I kind of get, you know, I get it to a certain respect, but. You're talking another year plus of this stuff's gonna bleed out. And you gotta think like a lot of this, a lot of the NFT market, um, obviously the volumes have dropped, volumes have dropped, volumes have dropped. At some point, more and more of these people that are holding these NFTs, they get desperate, they have to sell. Therefore, then once they sell, it just kind of breaks loose and the, and the floor price will drop and drop and drop and drop. And um, you know, at some point, people then will be holding this and it's just going to be dust they're going to be like wow that was stupid i mean thinking i should have bought a supercar like brian did <laughs> you know so again it's just uh you can't tell these people you know i've had several people that were newer to the crypto space that i individually told them but they thought they knew better they were going to actually one guy actually said i'm i'm going to create generational wealth and I was like, you should be buying a supercar or something. You should buy something tangible. He didn't listen to me. 
um, he's been obliterated. So, um, you know, he's still holding on to, you know, a few bits here and there, just kicking around, just looking at the charts, trying to draw lines all the time. And he still won't listen to me. So I don't have time for those people. You know, it's just, it's just very, very weird how you can sit there and then they won't admit, yeah, you're right. I should have done exactly what you did. They won't, they won't admit that. They won't admit that. So a lot of people are in denial. A lot of people get angry um, of the situation at hand, whether it be in crypto, whether it be in the stock market, whether it be in real estate. Um, you know, I've, I've told several people that, hey, real estate's gonna crash. And I was telling them that months ago, they don't wanna hear that. They don't wanna hear that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're, this could potentially be worse than 2008 for several different reasons. For one, that's another thing to point out, the savings rate typically averages around 8%. Like let's say personal savings rates average around 8%. Right now it's like down around 3% supposedly, um, which that makes sense. I mean, people don't have money. People have suddenly ran out of money. And um, so, you know, when it's down, the savings rate's super, super low. People can't operate and they're just getting hit left and right with these food prices and just, and I keep mentioning the deodorant because that was a big shocker to me. It was like every stick of deodorant was six bucks or higher. It's like, what is going on here? And barrel of oil, I think it was around like $88, but I guess OPEC is going to choke off the supply even more, which, you know, that's a whole nother thing. I mean, we, we, we should not be so reliant, obviously, on these other countries. We have the resources. Um, if not just in the United States, in North America, we have the resources. Um, so, I mean, again, just, you know, weird situation that we've landed ourselves in um, at this point. And I don't really see, there's, there's not gonna be any kind of quick resolution to it because as they raise interest rates, obviously the situation gets worse. The economy clinches up even harder People get mad. They want the Federal Reserve to, to pivot and change situations. They, they're going to try to print money to, you know, like California, for instance, which I'm not a resident here. So I, I don't actually, I would never claim residency in California, um, but they're going to send out checks for like a thousand bucks. Various different states are doing that to try to like either garner votes or just kind of like, you know, soften the blow of this whole, um, you know, inflation situation. So they're gonna send out checks of a thousand bucks. But again, most of these states, most of these counties, most of these cities are broke as a joke. So um, at the end of the day, there's not gonna be a quick resolution to it. Um, as, far as, as far as crypto is concerned, we have a long ways to go, guys. I'm just, it, you know, I, I can't reemphasize this enough. There's gonna be a few things here and there um, where there's gonna be a little bit of an opportunity, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have plenty of time to take decent positions. There's gonna be more of these capitulation. There's gonna be these attempted, you know, where it's gonna collapse and then people jump in too soon and then it gets retested. You know, see if they can catch it again. Okay, here you go, boom. And then it's gonna collapse again. And then, you know, and then it's gonna eventually just kind of break through and then it's just, you know, candles to hell. And then people's, that put in various stop losses or people that just throw in the towel um, are forced to sell people that need the money because cost has gotten too high. See, that's one of the things when people are in their first crypto cycles or these new investors in the stock market, the thing that they don't realize is they just think it's just this like little pullback or something. They try to jump in and then they think like in six, you know, maybe like two months or four months or six months, their problem's gonna be solved and they're gonna make this money. And then when it doesn't happen, they realize they're out of their other money and then they need that money to pay bills or pay this or that. Um, it just, you know, kind of happens over again. So it's gonna take a long time for this to um, bleed out. There's gonna be a lot of projects that are just gonna essentially lose liquidity, lose trading volume. And then um, it's gonna go dormant because people don't have time to work on it. They don't have the money to work on it. And that'll be that. Anyway, guys, uh, what's some of the stuff that you guys are seeing in your local communities? Some of the stuff you're seeing with inflation, kind of street level stuff. And then also in crypto, why do you think that, you know, the difficulty level for Bitcoin is going up? Why are people putting, you know, more machines into service to try to mine Bitcoin right now when energy costs are so high 
and when we're in a bear market. Anyway, guys, follow me on all social media at Brian Phobos, YouTube, Instagram, Steam it, Twitter, Hive, DTube, everywhere. See you guys.